Lisa, I'm intrigued by philosophy of biology, and I'll tell you why. I did my education in biology, my doctorate's in neuroscience, and my whole life I've been involved with philosophy and love philosophy and everything I've done. But I never brought the two together. I never saw the relationship. I thought those were two completely separate interests. <laughs> and now I see this field which has developed the last 30, 40, 50 years in philosophy of biology. You are one of the pioneers. So I'm looking to you as my teacher in philosophy of <laughs> biology. Why is this field developed? Why is it important? Well, well I'm, I'm not quite sure why it developed, except for people like David Hull and Marjorie Green and Michael Roos made it a point to ask philosophical questions and write about that. And they insisted on writing about that and publishing their work at a time when that was discouraged. Mm -hmm. um, when I went to Princeton um, to graduate school, and at that time that was the top depart analytic department, and um, they uh, prided themselves on that a great deal, um, I was uh, interested in philosophy of biology. I, I had written a paper my first year there, and uh, Bas von Frossen told me it was publishable, so I, re we revi I revised it and sent it off, and it was published. And um, I thought, well, this is great, but it was philosophy of biology. It was about the, the theory structure of evolutionary biology. And, and then the next year, I also wrote another paper that was also published in philosophy of science. But nevertheless, I was told by the chair of the Princeton department, you can't write your dissertation in philosophy mm. of biology. It's not a field. Wow. Uh -huh. um, because philosophy of science was the field. Philosophy of physics uh -huh. was philosophy of science. Uh -huh. Philosophy of science was philosophy of physics. And I was told, by, again, in the same conversation, you're smart enough to do philosophy of physics. Why are you messing around with biology? <laughs> and I said, you don't even understand why biology is interesting, number one. And number two, there's a lot of work to be done there in philosophy of biology. And people need to do it. And I'm doing it. So, <laughs> you know, I'm going to do this anyway. And he said, well, you're not going to earn a PhD from Princeton. Uh, that turned out to be false. But um, this is, to say I was discouraged, you know, kind of, uh, I think that's clear. So. Uh, and everyone was discouraged from going into the field, I think, at that time in around 1980. And, and we had these pioneers, and then we had this generation. Uh, Bill Wimsatt had some marvelous students, including Jim Griesmer, who is, you know, to my mind, the best there is in philosophy of biology. And, um, and he, he, he was encouraged to do philosophy of biology and history of biology. And, and, um, Fortunately, um, he went on to become a real pioneer in the field. So what are some of the contributions of philosophy of biology? What are the kinds of, uh, of uh, uh, progress that can be made, and how does it help? Well, uh, you're going to get a different answer from me than from other philosophers. Uh, I, I can tell. <laughs> <laughs> um, as a philosopher of science, I have always been oriented towards addressing problems that scientists have, not so much problems that philosophers mm -hmm. have. So it, it's a very common, what I view as an error, for a philosopher of science or a philosophy-oriented philosopher of science to go in to talk to a scientist and say, I have this philosophical problem. Let me tell you about it. And what do you have to offer me about that philosophical problem? I think that is a complete mistake. Um, I train my own students to do things completely differently. And to go in to talk to a scientist, introduce yourself, say, I'm a philosopher of science. What problems bother you? What are you puzzled about? What do you beat your head about? What problems would you like? the answer to that you don't have time to delve into. Um, that is how to do good philosophy of science, mm, to mm, my mind. Mm. And that is how I have always done philosophy of science. So when I had the opportunity, when I was in grad school, to be an exchange student 
up at Harvard to work in Dick Lewington's lab, to be in Dick Lewington's lab and trained by him as a student. Um, a, a move that was disallowed by the director of graduate studies, disallowed by the chair of the Princeton department. I had to appeal all the way up to the provost at Princeton in order to be, be, have them be overruled and have me be wow. able to be accepted in the program to go up and study with Lewinton. Never mind. Um, and uh, Lewinton, um, I went in there and I said, what would you like philosophers to address? What's your pr biggest problem that you're interested in? And he was interested in units of selection. He was interested in um, reductionism. He was interested in other things that you know are well established in his writing. Um, and so I learned about those problems from him. And I learned his angle on them. I learned Stephen Jay Gould's mm -hmm. angle on them from a class that they were teaching in problems in evolutionary theory. Um, and that's how I learned to do philosophy of biology, and that's how I teach my students to do philosophy of biology. There are others in the field who think that that is, you know, too science oriented. It's too much like science. It's too, it's it is science. They say it's not science. It's philosophy. You use philosophical tools to help answer scientific problems. You're not using scientific tools, you're using analytical tools. I've introduced several philosophical tools to help answer scientific problems, and the scientists have been very receptive to my solutions to their problems. Mm. Um, when I addressed the, for example, units of selection problem and said, you guys are asking four different questions, no wonder you fight all the time. <laughs> um, they, uh, the participants in the debate, all the way from the right wing of genetic selectionists to the far left wing of species selectionists and group selectionists, huh. all agreed that was the right answer. Mm -hmm. um, that, that goes from Gould and Lewinton all the way over to George Williams and, and John Maynard Smith. I mm. mean, they all agreed this is the right answer. So if that is a good approach, which I think is proven by that, then it is, anyway, my way of doing philosophy of biology.